What's up guys, it's Avery here. Let's talk about housing. I'm a real estate investing specific channel and often people will ask me, should I wait for a market crash before buying a house? There's such low supply, such high demand, markets are crazy, what should I be doing? And there are so many factors that go into answering this question, so let me break them down for you today. If this is your first time to the channel or if you're returning and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and do so. Tap that notification bell so you don't miss out on any tips for investing in real estate and things that you can do with your money in order to build your wealth. The real estate market is currently really hot and nobody can deny that and it's for a number of reasons. And that first reason would be that debt is super easy to acquire right now. Many people can purchase homes at 3% to 5% down, which is very little money and some people are lucky enough to even put 0% down with a V or USDA loan. Now it's not similar to 2008 where you could get loans with no income, no job, or no assets, or known as a ninja loan. Lending standards have tightened up a little bit since then, but it's still very easy to purchase a home with very little money. So in this example, you could purchase a $1 million home for only $30,000 or $35,000 down, which is not a whole lot of money when you consider how much house you're actually buying. And so this has a big effect on the amount of equity in the market. So because people are putting really little money down, they're very potentially over leveraged if they're buying a house that's beyond their means and they become house poor. Becoming house poor means that you might have that house that you really want, but you're tied to it because of such a high amount of monthly debt. So debt being very easy to acquire has a huge effect on the market because it allows more buyers with less amount of money to get in to buy a lot of homes. The next thing would be interest rates and interest rates are still historically low. In the 80s, they were in the 18% range for interest rates and today's rates are around 3%. Inflation pretty much grows at a 3% rate, so if you're going to get a loan from the bank, you're pretty much just keeping up with inflation when you're paying that bank loan back. So it makes a lot of sense for people to be able to acquire debt as well as use it if they want to invest in real estate or buy a home. And because interest rates are so low, people look at buying a home as being okay with putting more money down. If a house was $500,000 at a 5% interest rate versus $500,000 at a 3% interest rate, those people would be much more comfortable with buying that $500,000 house. And if they really want that house, they're more comfortable with putting $550,000 down with a much lower interest rate. And from those two points comes the major thing that's going on in the market. And when we're talking about markets, it's pretty much simply supply and demand. And right now in the housing market, there is a very low amount of supply. It started to soften up a little bit and we're seeing a little bit more on the market, but supply is still very low. And demand is extremely high. And demand is extremely high for a number of reasons. People have a lot more money right now. There was a K-shaped recovery with the economic crisis that happened throughout the coronavirus pandemic. There were many people where they lost a lot of money, but there were others that gained a lot of money through various assets like cryptocurrency or just investing in the stock market or not spending on frivolous things like they normally did, like going out to eat, going to the bar or traveling. So people have a lot more money to deal with right now and more money means people have the ability to spend more money on housing, which can drive up the prices. The increased demand would also be attributed to a change in lifestyle. Many people at the outset of the pandemic didn't wanna be sitting in their condos or their apartments downtown. They wanted to move to the suburbs or find their own place to stay. They didn't want roommates. They wanted space, they wanted an office, they wanted a backyard, and they wanted a nice dog to go with it. So many people at the onset of the pandemic were nervous about doing anything real estate related. And I actually was able to pounce on this and buy another home during this time when everyone was very uncertain. But that's beside the point. And because so many people were uncertain, there was less homes on the market. They didn't want people coming in to see their homes. And this because of interest rates being low, coupled off with people not wanting to sell their house, had a huge influx in refinancing their property. So many more people were refinancing their property and not wanting to sell because they could do a cash out refinance, which was a non-taxable event. People didn't wanna sell their house and then potentially buy a different one because that's a taxable event and they noticed prices were going up. So they'd rather just take some cash out of their home with the equity that they have 
and spend it on renovations like building an office addition or doing whatever they wanted with their money, potentially buying a bunch of Bitcoin. So many people were not interested in selling but doing those cash out refinances instead, as well as there was the added benefit of forbearance and eviction moratoriums to homeowners. So if you couldn't pay your monthly mortgage, you could go into forbearance, which allowed you to delay payments, as well as there was an eviction moratorium which coupled with that forbearance made more people go into forbearance. So it wasn't just necessarily homeowners who were living in their property, but it was homeowners who were renting out their property to people who couldn't afford the rent. And then those homeowners couldn't afford to pay that mortgage without the rent. So because of the eviction moratorium, there were more forbearances and because of the pandemic and people losing their job, there were also people going into forbearance, which made it so that there was a lower supply in the market because these people weren't having to sell their homes like they normally would if they were getting foreclosed on, but they were going into forbearance instead. So making debt very easy to acquire would make it so that the amount of equity that you have in your home is potentially very, very low. So if the price of your home goes down because there's a market crash, you could be underwater on your mortgage. Same thing applies if you do a cash out refinance and you went from having a $450,000 loan on your $800,000 house and you take out $200,000, you now have a $650,000 loan on your $800,000 house. So your mortgage increased even though you got that cash out refinance and that money to pay for it. And potentially if the market crashes by all of that $150,000 amount or more, you could be underwater on your home and you would be stuck either selling your home at a loss or having to hold on to that home. So I bring up the equity not because it necessarily plays into the market today, but how it might affect your decision if you wanna buy a house and you're thinking about waiting for a market crash. And I think there are two reasons and two things that will play into making that decision. And that would be the amount of equity that is in the market and people have in their home, as well as government intervention. If people, because they're doing these cash out refinances or are buying homes overvalued or are able to buy homes with low money down, eventually their equity goes much lower than they thought and the amount that their home is worth goes down quite a bit, they could be underwater. And essentially because of that, unless they bought a home in a smart way, which not a lot of people do, where they're not feeling like they're over leveraged and they're house poor and they're putting every single dollar of their monthly payment towards that home and not able to spend money on anything else, they are going to have to sell their home. And this is a reality for a lot of people. Many people do not think about the actual cost of a home when they're buying it and the amount that their monthly payment is. They are just thinking about, I want that home. The lender said I could buy a million dollar home. I'm gonna buy a million dollar home. The ideology of people isn't, the lender said I could buy a million dollar home, so maybe I'll buy a really nice $650,000 home. That is not people's mindsets. People think to what they are told. If I'm told I can get that house, I will try to get that house. So back in 2008, this is what happened. Many people were underwater on their mortgage. So a lot of people ended up selling and it was really easy to find deals. And this made it so that the supply went way up and the demand wasn't increasing the same as the supply. But in today's world, there is a lot of government intervention. And because of government intervention, it's possible that all of these people will be able to hold onto their homes without selling, which will keep the supply low. So there are really two things that could potentially happen with government intervention in today's market that would have an effect on supply as well as demand. And that first is the continuance of forbearance and people not having to pay their mortgage. The other government intervention which would have an effect on demand would be down payment assistance. The current administration wants to offer a $15,000 down payment assistance to those who qualify. And while this sounds like a good thing and it might allow more people to buy homes, it really will just have a negative effect on prices if you don't have a home yet. If you are a homeowner, it will keep increasing the value of your home, which is great, which is what you want. And if you had a whole swath of buyers that couldn't afford to buy a home before and you give them money for a down payment, now the demand has increased like crazy and because of forbearance, the supply has stayed low and simple economics tells us that the prices will keep going up and up. So more buyers, same amount of supply, price increases. So the question still remains that I haven't really answered. I've talked about what's going on in the current market and what could potentially happen with government intervention, with supply, with demand changing, all of that stuff. But the question remains, should you wait to buy a home? Should you wait for some type of market crash so that you can buy a home for less than they're worth now? And for me, it doesn't really matter when you buy a home. It's more important to get a home and then wait. Do not try to time the market 
but have more time in the market. So for me, there's some basic tenets that I follow when I buy a house, whether or not it would be a good deal or a good thing to pursue, and whether or not it's the right time to actually buy a home. And like I said, I think it's always the right time to buy a home. So the first thing that I live by is that I make sure that I never buy a retail home. And what is a retail home? Well, if you've ever watched HGTV and seen Fixer Upper or a show like that, and they have ripped the house down to the studs and made it look absolutely beautiful, that would be a retail home. You have those high-end appliances, granite countertops, all the beautiful things that people want in their home. If you buy that home and say it's worth $500,000 and you're buying at the very top end of the market cycle, as well as the high end of the market, so the nicest home in the area, and then the market crashes the next day, you have no ability to make that home any nicer. So if you buy the nicest possible home, you can't make it look any nicer than it already is. If you buy a place that is in need of some cosmetic repair or other type of repairs and the market crashes, at least you could put some money into that home and increase its value so that you wouldn't be underwater if you absolutely had to sell. The next thing I look at is only buy what you can actually afford to pay monthly or if there was a 20% dip in rental income that your rental property would still cash flow or be covered and not be negative. That's extremely important. Like I said, if your lender tells you you can afford a million dollar home, maybe you just buy a $650,000 home instead. There's no reason to go to the absolute max. Make sure you're buying within or well below your means and what makes sense. The other thing that's important to note is not all homes when there's a recession decrease in value. So if you buy a good deal, it will always be a good deal. If the area is progressing, getting better, and going from a place that people didn't necessarily wanna to live to a much better place where people wanna live now, then it will still be a good place to live. If those jobs are lasting through the recessions, if their areas, the industries, the sectors are still doing well when things are going down, people are still gonna to wanna to live there. So a good deal will always be a good deal. And things you always wanna look out for are population growth in the area, economic and job diversity in the area, as well as making sure that the area is progressing, City Hall is doing good economic development to make that area a better place and more desirable for more people wanting to live there. Another thing that's extremely important that I really don't think anyone thinks about whatsoever, especially the standard home buyer, Maybe real estate investors think about this a little bit more, but many standard home buyers do not think about this is having multiple exit strategies. Typically when someone buys a home, they plan to live there and then they plan to sell it, which is great. They may have made some money over time. They have potentially a bigger family, so they need to buy a bigger home. All of those things are standard lifestyle events, but you need to have multiple exit strategies. So it's possible, again, you buy at this high end of the market, but you need to move because you have a bigger home, you can't fit everyone in there, and now you're at the low end of the market, and you're not actually gonna make any money on this home, you paid a bunch of debt to it, now you're selling at a loss, and you're gonna to have to take some money out of pocket to pay the loan off, as well as put more money down to the next home. So instead of potentially doing that and buying the other home, does it make sense for you to be able to rent out that home, or Airbnb that home, or whatever it is, to take care of that market cycle while you then go buy the other house. People talk a lot about dollar cost averaging into stocks, where that would mean if you bought stocks, say once a month, and they're $100, and then $80, then 50, then 60, 70, 120, you have an average stock price. Well, people don't think about this often with homes. If you buy that two bed, one bath home as a starter family home, and then the prices go down and down and down, and that three bed, two bath is now worth what your two bed, one bath was because the market has crashed, you can dollar cost average into homes. As long as you're able to hold on to that two bed, one bath, even if you've gone underwater, because you've done some upfront understanding analysis of those properties to figure out what the rent will be and if it will cover the mortgage and expenses so that you can afford to continue to keep that home as well as buy the other one that you need for whatever life event that you're having. And the last thing that I'll say and something that I did mention was time in the market is way more important than timing the market. You need to just make sure that you have that home and as long as you're able to go through some of the cycles, historically, home prices will go up and up and up based on everything that's ever happened in the history of housing. So as long as you can have that time in the market and you have multiple exit strategies, 
then you can get through those periods of negativity in the cycles of real estate. So to answer the question, no, I would not wait. I personally would never wait to buy any real estate as long as you're buying the right real estate. You're just going to miss out on a year or two of principal pay down, equity gains that you're gonna get in the market, tax write-offs, and many other benefits that are associated with buying real estate. So I personally always think it's a good time to buy a house as long as you plan to hold it long enough and you buy correctly. My thoughts on where the market potentially is going is that in 2025, people are gonna think, wow, 2021 was a cheap year to buy real estate. And I think that's always going to be the case, especially now with much more government intervention. The government and the banks and everybody does not want to have a repeat of 2008. And I don't think there's gonna be that same flood of supply. And there's still going to continue to be a lot of demand as more and more people learn about these cool real estate investing techniques and more and more people have access to the ability to buy a home through things like down payment assistance. So I really think that home prices will continue to go up. I don't think that they'll continue to go up at the current rate that they are. Right now home prices look like this, an exponential curve. I think that'll taper off a little bit. Interest rates will start to increase. So that will at least have a little bit better take on the amount of demand that people have for homes and their ability to overpay for homes. So I really think it is always better to buy a home now and wait rather than wait and buy a home. So if my predictions are wrong, I don't really care as long as you smash the like button, but it'll be cool to watch this five years from now and see if what I was saying actually made sense or if it were right. But really all you need to do is stick to that middle portion of the video where I'm talking about the basic tenants towards buying a home. Make sure that you follow those, smash the like button, subscribe, comment, share with your friends so more people understand what's going on in the housing market. Thanks again for watching and hope to see you guys next time.